Hello and thank you for joining me today. I will be going over my smart grid automation project that I have been working on for the past month and a half. Um, so over here we have our smart grid. It is basically the exact same as it was uh, in the first iteration as far as the setup and build is concerned. Uh, down here we have our solar panel and our solar panel mount which we use to be able to charge our two lead acid banks. From there, there's our Xantrex that actually is used to charge those battery banks. From there, we uh, convert the DC energy through the DC to AC inverters. We have three inverters, the, uh, the Cobra 800, the Ames Pure Sine Wave Inverter, and the Cobra 400 inverters. From there, we also have our battery management system. And right here is where the BEV battery pack goes. Uh, we currently are waiting on new cells to come in. And so until that point, we will have to um, basically just imagine that it's sitting there. We have our CCCB along with our AC uh, power supply for the C-Rio and the C-Rio itself. So that is our sensing system. So the basic Basically the first new feature with this is that we have two main toggle switches as opposed to the original 14. The two toggle switches are used to turn on the Ames inverter and the C-Rio and the AC supply for the, uh, for the relay module. And so this switch on the left, you can see that the top is blue so if you switch that switch up then it turns on the Ames inverter with the blue lead acid battery. The bottom turns it on with the black lead acid battery. And then the switch on the right here decides whether you are actually going to take the AC power from the inverter or from the generator. So in this case, uh, I'm going to turn on the blue lead acid battery to the Ames inverter because this also powers up our battery management system. And so you can see we have our lights shining. So we can see that our battery management system is on. There are faults because the battery pack is not currently connected. Once the battery pack is connected, then those faults clear. And back here we have, you can see the little green light, which means that our Ames inverter is powered on. So at this point, we can either choose to turn on our C-Rio from the inverter. So I'll show that first. So now back here, you can see that we have the little lights turned on. So the C-Rio is currently powered up, as well as our relay module. Everything AC gets its power through this one hub right here. We have our C-Rio, relay module, and our pyranometer power. And this goes to the switch, which basically turns everything on. Underneath, you can see our coiled up cord for our power supply for the relay module itself. From here you can see the rest of the relay, or pardon, the wires coming out of the relay module as well as the extra, um, as well as the extra uh, relay, the power relays for the popcorn maker, as well as the two relays for the battery management system. So next I'm going to show you uh, that we do in fact get power from the generator as well. It's going to turn off the system, give it a second to shut everything off correctly, and now turn it onto the generator. And we currently do not have the generator running because it would be loud and we are inside, so we are simply plugged into a wall outlet. But this would work the exact same work running off of the generator. And so back over here, you can see we have our green light for the Ames inverter, for the C-Rio. Flashing light means that there are communications going out and again we have power to the relay module. Now the next step is to plug in our two cables. We have the USB cable for the relay module as well as the Ethernet cable or Cat5 cable for communication with the C-Rio. Once we plug those two in, we'll give it a second to communicate with the system and then, hello there, I'm going to go ahead and now we can either run this through LabVIEW or through the brand new program that we have created. 
but I'm going to use the Smart Grid program. So it's kind of fuzzy, but it's there. You can see Smart Grid. Start up the program. We'll wait just a second for it to start up. There it goes. We'll go ahead and maximize this window. So this first window that pops up, it's asking us to save our program or pardon all of our data from the program. So I'm going to save it as my save file. I actually have an old one, so I'll do my save file number five. Go ahead and hit OK. Maximize the screen. As you can see, we have, let's see if this will focus in. It doesn't look like it wants to focus. Let's see if I can, can't really see that the numbers are changing. But anyways, we have four main areas of the program front panel. We have our solar stuff. So this is our solar panel output, our Xantrex output, our pyranometer uh, sensor readings, along with the maximum solar irradiance, as well as the efficiencies of the solar system. We then have our Cobra inverter for our constant current, constant voltage charger for the BEV pack, the inputs to the Cobra, outputs to the CCCB, and the efficiency losses. We have our Ames inverter, the inputs to the Ames inverter, outputs, and the efficiency. And once again, with the popcorn maker inverter, we have our inputs, outputs, and efficiency. Over here, we have our black lead acid battery, our blue lead acid battery, and our generator voltage. And then, of course, up here is where we set our solar panel area for the calculations with the pyranometer. On the bottom here, we have our 13 switches, which basically turn on everything in the system besides those two manual switches that we had at the beginning. So this first column is our popcorn maker from the inverter, popcorn maker from the generator, CCCV from the inverter, CCCV from the generator. We have our popcorn maker inverter inputs from the BEV pack, the blue pack or the blue lead acid battery and the black lead acid battery. We have the CCCV inputs for or the uh, the inverter inputs from the blue and the black lead acid battery as well as the option to allow charging from the CCCV. Finally, we have our solar controls whether we want to charge the black battery, the blue battery, or to be able to turn on the pyranometer. And so as some of my testing, we cannot really test any of the BEV stuff because we don't have a BEV pack right now, nor would the BMS let us charge because the cells are completely unbalanced. What we can check is the popcorn maker inverter. Go ahead and click this. You heard the click. That's turned on from the blue. So down here we have a couple of things. You can see that our power inverter is now on. We're sending signal to the computer from the relay module. And our popcorn maker inverter is now on. You can see the little green light. So now we turn on the popcorn maker AC power from the inverter. Heard the click again. That allows power. So now we turn on the popcorn maker. Very simple, very straightforward. If we would like to use the generator power for the popcorn maker, simply turn off the inverter, turn on the generator. Once again, we have power to our popcorn maker. Now, one thing that you should note is that we have two switches. We can either go from the generator or the inverter for the popcorn maker. If both of these switches are on, the popcorn maker will not get power. This is a safety mechanism to make sure that we don't fry out the inverter. But of course, once you turn one of them off, now we're getting power from the inverter again. And there's our popcorn maker. So I'm going to go ahead and shut everything off. Now one thing that you'll notice here is that I do still have one switch on. But when I start the program, or stop the program, pardon, you heard the click, the 
the power inverter is now not on because I have set up a safety mechanism to turn everything off within the program once you, uh, once you stop the program. Another thing to note is that if you start this program again, there's our pop-up window for it, and you heard the click, our relay is back on again. So this is something that we need to note. Go ahead and save this. It throws an error if you don't create a save file. So my save file six. Go ahead and save it. You'll notice turn off all switches before starting the program in red surrounded by green. It's to hopefully remind everybody that you need to turn everything off to be able to stop the program or to be able to start the program. So that's basically everything. Um, there's not really any new power pathways in the system. Um, there's not really any added features or anything like that. Um, this is basically just to recreate the original smart grid with some, uh, with some safety stuff in it to make sure that we don't fry any of the components, as well as to give the option to be able to control everything through the program. And so these output data files basically output 38 different uh, sets of data, um, and they are stored at one second iterations. I wish that I could show you some of the, um, some of the uh, readings from the data, but the camera wouldn't focus in. I'll provide some screenshots so that you can see what these different readings look like and to kind of give you an idea of what this looks like as a working system. So I thank you for your time and hopefully you have a great day. Thank you.